we are currently struggling under what I've decided to term a mog, a moron occupied government, which means we are on the regular being mogged by the Labour Party because they're morons. They are literally that I, I said this very originally, but I, I genuinely think that the Labour Party has a an average IQ, the Labour front bench, of about 90. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm being generous, I'm to be not fair. Being generous. Generous. I, no, I'm not being generous. I'm being very serious about this. I don't think they're intelligent people. And what I would love is for them to have to do a public IQ test. Just all <laughs> sit down, do the IQ test, and just have them on a scoreboard come up with the rankings. Well, in the similar way that people wanted Biden to do the cognitive test, yes. we want to know how intelligent the yeah. Labour Party I, is. I want Labour Party members doing IQ tests. If they're not members of Mensa, I'm not interested. It's not, they don't even have to be members of Mensa. I just want to be average. Well, you've seen David Lammy on Mastermind, I, haven't you? That That we, is... Amazing. I have, absolutely. And so I, I guess the inspiration for this segment came from uh, Keir Starmer, because he was giving his speech at the Labour Party conference, and there was a hilarious gaffe. Hilarious. The return of the sausages. The hostages. <laughs> Hamas have captured a bunch of Israeli sausages. Uh, Keir Starmer is very upset by this and wants the return of the sausages. Um, now, obviously, this is just a gaffe. Everyone is prone to make mistakes. Everyone, I mean, maybe he was a bit hungry when he was going up there. He's like, I'll eat afterwards. I haven't got time. And uh, it was just on his mind. Or maybe it was written on the teleprompter and he didn't. Maybe it was a mistake on the teleprompter and he just read it with sincerity and passion because I too would like lunch. Um, the thing is, he's vegetarian as well, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> so he just misread the word, I guess. Um, but this isn't the only moronic thing he's done. And I, I don't want people coming away from this thinking, well, look, he, he miss, miss, miss said a word. It's like, yeah, he did, but anyone could make a gaffe like that. You know, it's, you know, it's on the teleprompter, he's 61, maybe his eyes are a bit, you know... It, that's that's by far from the worst and least the most stupid thing that he's done. Um, so I mean, what's going on? So of course you've got the uh, <clears throat> the opportunity to make himself less hateful to the country, and so he's been interviewed by the media a lot recently because he's had a lot of uh, controversies surrounding him over things that are formal and procedural a lot of the time. And so, for example, on the uh, case of. You are going to be killing loads of pensioners. Do you want to at least apologise? And he was just like, no. I mean, in fact, he turns himself into the victim of it. It's quite Would great. Would you like to take this opportunity to say sorry to pensioners like Chrissy? Well, I am really concerned that we've been put in this position. Kia, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really sorry that people criticize me for basically being <laughs> yeah. completely unpopular. I'm very sorry about this. I'm really sorry that I'm being forced to kill Granny. It's like <laughs> someone coming across you in a dark alleyway and saying, I'm really sorry that you found yourself in this situation, yeah. but I've got to take your wallet and keys. It, it really is. Far right <laughs> Granny made me do it. <laughs> well, no, the Conservative Party made him do it, is his argument. Mm. He, he goes on to be like, well, you know, Conservatives left us with £22 billion in the hole. Someone's granny's going to have to freeze to death. And just to be clear as well, I mean, they are well aware that uh, this is probably going to kill about 4,000 pensioners. Uh, but he's just like, well, you know, I'm not sorry about it. It's just unfortunate that I've been put in this position. It's like Mr. Freeze. He, <laughs> he, everything yeah. freezes. We need, to burn, <laughs> we need to burn lots and lots of fossil fuels to flatten the curve because remember, yeah. our pensioners are our most important asset in Britain. But the, 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 the funniest thing, though, he was given such an easy out there. It's like, yeah, I'm truly sorry this is going to be done or something like that. But he doesn't. He's not sorry for it. And he's too stupid to know that he should be trying to appeal to people's sentiments, right? Yeah. He's too stupid to understand that oh, people look at me like I'm doing the wrong thing, which is why he's constantly being grilled. Uh, and so then in the same interview, uh, I can't remember what this woman's name is. She's Good Morning Britain host. I can't remember. I can't remember either. Yeah, I do know it. But I oh, just... Susanna Reid? Oh, uh, Susanna Reid, that's right. Um, yeah, so Susanna Reid, you, you can tell she's laying him up for this. She's like, look, everyone hates you because you're going to kill their grandmother. Do you want to say sorry or something to try and get yourself in good graces? She's basically kicking him under the table at this point. Well, she's teeing him up. She's giving him every opportunity. And so she's in this one, she's like, well, you're giving billions to Ukraine. Is there anything you want to say about this? We're about to be in America, in New York. We spend $3 billion on Ukraine, $8 billion on foreign aid. 
What do you say to those who say, spend that money at home? I understand that argument, but I think in relation to, let's say, Ukraine, we have to understand that that war in Ukraine is not just about Ukraine. It's about Russian aggression. It's about our freedom, our democracy, the way we're able to exercise our rights in this country. It is the frontier of freedom. And so it's really important that we stand with Ukraine. That's why... Sorry, Ukraine is the frontier of freedom. I think before 2014, wasn't it the most corrupt European country? Yes. Zelensky was a comedian before he became the president, and now he's a billionaire. How does a comedian become a billionaire? I mean, he's not that funny, right? The, the idea that, like, if Ukraine falls, Britain's next, the Russians are not going to invade Britain. I think at the very least he's a multi-millionaire. No, no, he, he had something like 800 million. Really? Yeah, yeah, he's got it in like offshore bank accounts. I'm not even joking. He is, I'm, look it up, I swear to you. Okay, him. okay. Zelensky is worth an ungodly amount of money, and it's just like, how did he mass this as a comedian? He's just a really funny guy. Yeah, he's just really funny. Um, so, again, you could, you, could have, you could have said something more deferential, but no, his premise is, well, if Ukraine falls, Britain's next. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're an idiot. That's obviously not going to be the case. You know, like, he... Putin can't even take all of Ukraine. Like, he can take a couple of border regions that are mostly Russian, and that's as far as he's got. So it's like, no, that's nonsense. This is fake. You're full of it. But what you are saying is that, no, I'm literally going to take money from Granny and give it to <laughs> Zelensky. But also, it wouldn't even be in Russia's interest to take the British Isles because they would <laughs> become a pariah the world over. Just like, well, no one wants to be near Russia because they keep on taking random countries. <laughs> But also, why would you take things of such little value? <laughs> That's uh, true. Russia has taken over Britain. Okay, so all of our problems are now your problems. Okay, good luck. I mean, liberate you know, Britain. Yeah, and so nothing about Keir Starmer's approach here has been intelligent. Right, none of it's been sophisticated. He hasn't managed to finesse this in any way, shape, or form. And of course, his popularity is plummeting. Did you want to? Yeah, I I have some reservations because. Okay, okay, I don't think he is uh, he's IQ 90. My reservation is... Well, he's the 100 IQ. He's the, he's, the, <laughs> he's the thing making it. Yeah, something that I worry about, which is harrowing, yeah. is whether he wants to habituate the population into not expecting him to be sentimental towards yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, I, well, the thing is, I think that implies far too much um, sort of forethought on his part. I don't think he's that much of a strategic thinker. Uh, I think he actually is just kind of heartless and doesn't care. Uh, but he's also... He has about sausages, though. Uh, well, no, that was a mistake, remember. He doesn't want the return of the sausages. He doesn't even want your sausages back. Uh, he doesn't even care. Um, but anyway, so moving on. Again, mired in public scandal because this is a moronic party. Uh, for some reason, Keir Starmer has accepted that Sue Gray, his uh, chief of staff needs to be paid more than he is paid. Now, there's something very peculiar about that. It's like, why is the chief of staff being paid more than the prime minister himself? Surely, as the top of the executive branch, he should be getting paid more. But no, he's accepted that. But not only has he accepted it, he decided to come out and say to the public, and I quote, uh, this is not for public debate. It's like, uh, oh, really? Because we're going to debate this a lot. And how you treat that is, again more an indication of how stupid you are when you are approaching these issues. So he thinks this is fine, and uh, not a direct quote, but in summary, fuck them pensioners, was basically the opinion. So she's going to get paid stacks, the pensioners are getting their money taken away, Ukraine is going to get billions every year, and you don't even get to have a say in this, says the Prime Minister. This is dumb. This is really dumb. This is bad politics. You are doing everything wrong, and maybe I, I shouldn't be complaining. But then, I mean, he could have saved this, by the way, just by saying easily. <clears throat> he could have said, "Well, as the prime minister, I think it's um, in poor taste when people are struggling yeah. to increase my salary above that of Sue Gray, uh, and so I'm willingly taking less money." And at least he can frame it as yeah. I'm trying to be virtuous here. But yeah, she or at least say that uh, he's in a position to get more donations than she is. Maybe, uh, maybe he could have. <laughs> I mean, uh, we'll we'll go into the donations in a minute. But like, I mean, she's being moronic as well. It's like, why are you insisting on 170 grand? Like, if you got 165 grand, then you'd be on less than him, and you wouldn't notice it. 
you know, you're still going to be taking home way more than 10 grand a month. So, like, come on, you greedy morons. But they're like, no. And you're not allowed to talk about it. It's like, okay, understood. Evil, right? But the freebies are just a perennial issue where Keir Starmer is, again, not in any way apologetic. <laughs> I had to. Yeah, ex- idiot. I had to take the freebies for my son says Keir Starmer, because he says, quote, my boy is in the middle of his GCSEs. I made him a promise, a promise that he would be able to get his school, do do his exams without being disturbed, which meant I need to take 20 grand. Uh, We have a lot of journalists outside our house where we live, and I'm not complaining about that. That's fine, but if you're 16 and trying to do GCSEs, uh, I promised him we we would move somewhere, get out of the house, and go somewhere where we'd be peacefully studying. And so Lord Ali offered him the use of his $18 million penthouse, um, and so it's like okay but you could have gone almost anywhere right you know it it, again it didn't have to look so obviously corrupt so this is one of those things where almost everyone knows someone who has taken their gcse's right yes i remember when i was taking their gcse yes and and so we know we have personal experience as well as you know we know people who have gone through it they didn't need a multi-million pound penthouse. I was locked away Weirdly. in my parents' dining room yeah. and just no one was allowed to come in. That was enough. Yeah. You know, they could watch TV in the other room. That's yeah. fine. You, you're just didn't distract me reading your notes. It's, it's really not that much. But anyway, so speaking of Lord Ali, now one thing that Labour have always been hammering is closing of tax loopholes because, of course, the Labour Party, despite all of the apparent stupidity and corruption, are against that kind of thing. Very amusingly, even Lord Ali is a moron because he was like, oh, yeah, no, that's right. I have a massive stake in a firm that's based in the Virgin Islands that I don't pay tax on. And I'm going to get £425,000 from that this year. And I forgot to declare it. Whoopsie, I'm just a moron. It's like, God, what is wrong with you people? Like, you are doing everything wrong. Everything. It's just genuinely moronic. He's, he's, got, he's a director of Mac BVI Limited, which is based in the British Virgin Islands, which uh, was only added to his register of interest when he was contacted by Open Democracy to ask why it was missing. He's like, yeah, whoopsie, I'm just stupid. It's like, yes. The only reason it's going to be based out of there anyway, isn't it? To avoid tax. Of course, of course. So they're going to... I mean, Keir Starmer has taken more gifts and donations than any other politician since 2019. So it's just like, I can't believe you managed to outdo Boris, frankly. You know, <laughs> well done. Boris was too busy making mini <laughs> Borises to get distracted with gifts. Yes, he was. But it's, it, again, okay, you're corrupt. Okay, you're communists. But do you have to be so dumb about it? You know, do you have to make it so in our faces? You know, and I, I guess I'm, I shouldn't be complaining because this is good for us. But it's just like, I'm, be, I'm insulted that they're mogging us. This I think the, right. the ideology has progressed so much oh, that yeah. they're in the position where they just don't care. Well, they I'm, genuinely think that they don't have to answer to anyone, that they're so not they, accountable. They, they do think that, but I think there's something more. Because I think the problem with ideology, and I think the Labour Party is entirely controlled by ideology, is that it's essentially programming for midwits, right? So if you don't know anything about the subject and you're not very smart, you can just parrot the line and someone will say, okay, at least, at least he's conformable, right? Yeah. He's, he's in the in-club, he understands, he's going to do the doctrine, and so he can fail upwards right and this is how david lammy ended up as the foreign secretary and we'll get to him in a minute right so anyway so he's again being interviewed by the media and then he just gives the game away completely and this i love this clip so much and beth i might just gently say sky invite us to quite a lot of hospitality events um, your summer party is a great party <laughs> costing thousands of pounds and you invite me every year um, presumably you want politicians to continue to come and you know part of that is um, how politics um, and you, that's why the what, what I'm how to... politics works that like you're just giving the game away yeah look we're all in it we, we it's all a big slush we, we all invite each other to very expensive hospitality why are you grilling me on this you do it as well I do it they do it Angela Rain is like the Tories so it's like yeah it's all a big grift isn't it and, and it's just like you're, in a, you're on a TV interview. You could have said that after the interview. You could have said it before the interview. But no, he's like, you know what? No, I want I want everyone to know it's all a big griff and we're all in it together. And, and we all go to the parties and they invite us. And it's just how it works. You fucking idiot. <laughs> Why, like, don't me wrong, I'm glad you're doing it, but it's so stupid, right? He looked so shocked as he was saying I know. It. She's like, what are you doing? 
right? It's interesting. He says now, I wasn't going to let my son fail, but before the elections, he said that he wouldn't somehow intervene into the NHS oh, yeah, yeah. to save a, but, a, a as if, relative. Well, you've got to understand, every single person in England fails their GCSEs because they're not in 18 million pound penthouses, right? Keir Starmer's son is going to be the only person who passes this year. Um, but anyway, even like regime comedians like Jonathan Pye are like, my God, how bad are the Labour Party? I mean, he says here, you can't be in opposition for 14 years, criticising the Tories for accepting gifts and certain privileges. Then act surprised when the public call you out for doing the same thing. From Angela Rayner's but everyone does it excuse to Starmer saying it was the right thing to do. <laughs> Labour need to sort their S out ASAP because the honeymoon periods go, this has been an absolute car crash. It's like, even Jonathan Pye, again, like someone who is congenitally, like intrinsically, morally, spiritually, the managerial labor class voter, like even he's just like, God, you guys are terrible. Right. So anyway, let's uh, let's move on. So you got the Southport riots, of course, which were uh, almost universally in the labor heartlands. We have a map here just to be clear about this. Right. So you might think, hmm, the labor voters, the labor base are really unhappy with what's going on. How will I handle this? Now, Keir Starmer, of course, came out and just called them racists. And this carried on at the Labour Party protest, so at uh, the Labour Party conference. So, quote from uh, Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary, don't tell me that was a protest. Don't tell me it was uh, about immigration or policing or poverty. It was racism. It was thuggery. It was crime. That's right. Yeah, call your core heartlands racist thugs and criminals. Why not? Why not, why not do this? How is this going to improve? No, it's not going to improve. You're going to make yourselves look like morons. You're going to make yourselves hated. And you're too stupid to understand that this is the consequence. I mean, there are so many just small, stupid things that the Labour Party does. I just can't get over it. And I realize I'm going on, but like, it's just constant. For example, like, uh, they're going to have a, a conference. Let's have a conference. Let's bring in all of the billionaires from around the world and get them to invest in the UK. Good thinking. So what, what about the richest man in the world who seems to be very pro-Britain, actually? What are we going to do? We're going to keep him out because he said things about the Southport riots on Twitter. And we don't like it. And so we're not going to invite him. So Keir Starmer has been beefing with Elon Musk. Again, moron moron what are you doing why are you arguing with the richest and one of the most famous men in the world why are you publicly doing this uh because he will then say well actually uh i'm not bothered about being shunned quote i don't think anyone should go to the uk when they're releasing convicted pedophiles in order to imprison people for social media posts says musk to 190 million people around the world uh yeah and and okay well done Keir. but the thing is as well <clears throat> There's no way Keir Starmer can compete with Elon Musk. He just needs to say, "Look, look at my, um, you know, space company. Mm -hmm. Look at my electric vehicle company. Look at all these other things I'm doing. Neuralink. All of these companies." And you're killing grannies. Yeah, and freeing paedophiles. That's <laughs> all he has left to a portion of his audience, though, because they're saying, "Okay, just he, he is against the rich." So he makes this public. Meanwhile, he invites others to do yeah. to come to the. He's against some of the rich, but other of the rich, right? So anyway, the BBC were like, well, hang on a second. Uh, the BBC say, quote, earlier this month, the government released some prisoners to reduce prison overcrowding, but no sex offenders were included. That was wrong. <laughs> because the Labour Party are thick as pig s, right? So they decided to have this mass releasing of a couple of thousand prisoners, which, of course, the prisoners themselves were thrilled about. Champagne corks. One of them was like, yeah, I'm going to be a Labour voter for life now. It's like, yeah, you look like you've got an IQ of about 90. That's true. You know, you're genuinely representative, right? But no, they released 37 people who were wrongly uh, tagged to be released. Uh, one of them actually was a sex offender. So, <laughs> five of them are still on the loose. They managed to get 32 is, of them back. This is like Chris Morris writing for brass eye yes, it is yes it is. it's just like this is the one thing we didn't want to happen yes so yeah i, I mean e elon's not wrong they they released rapists and nonsense and stuff uh they did get 32 of them back five of them are still on the loose so best of luck to the general public should we say there um and anyway so that that's just catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe stupid unforced errors that didn't have to happen and then of course Keir Starmer says at the latest speech well the state needs to be in control it's going to take back control of people's lives <laughs> what a horrifying thing for a politician to say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, 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 why would you say that mm -hmm. why would you say that unless you were a complete moron 
Even the, the the dictators of the 20th century didn't say it that explicitly. Well, no, that's not true. Because he doesn't but, fear r any repercussions. It, it, I think it's because he's not smart enough to understand. To, 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 to be of a certain intelligence allows you to create a mental model of someone else's perspective, right? So you can think, okay, what would this person think of this? And you go, they probably wouldn't like that. And so I won't do that because they won't like it. And so this is the, you know, essentially the basis of all morality. I don't think he's possible of this. I don't think he's capable of creating a mental model of other people's thoughts. And so I'd put him at about 95 IQ, probably, something like that. But, um, but un unironically, uh, he wants the Labour government to take control, more control of people's lives and take control of the market. And like Lisa Nandy was like, yeah, we want government walking with you everywhere you go. God, just leave me alone, you freaks. Anyway, we're not at the end. Uh, David Lammy, of course, went to the United Nations and gave an amazing little speech towards Putin. I think we'll we may as well just watch it because it's incredible. I also want to speak directly to the Kremlin and its representative here today. And Vladimir Putin, Russia sits on this council, but its actions tear up the UN Charter. Russia sits on this council, but over the weekend, we saw this it... Isn't actually, there the was memory. more to the speech. Oh, I've got the wrong one. I thought this was the one. But basically, he sits there and says, I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. I think that, he goes on to say that is it, later. Is it in this one, is it? I think it might be, yeah. to wreck cities. No, it's not or maybe it's in the lead up to he, it. Yeah. yeah, he basically said that he was uh, his he's a black uh, person yeah. and his I'm a black man. I stand here before you today, uh, and it's like victims David. of imperialism, and now what Putin did yeah. is imperialism. And, and it's like David. I mean, there are so many things wrong with what you're saying here. One, you're sitting down, right? You're not standing before them, right? What you're doing <laughs> is, you, I mean, he's literally sitting down, right? So <laughs> it's like you, you, absolute moron, right? You're, you're living through some sort of civil rights fan fiction in your head, right? Because Russia never had an African empire. Russia has got 0% black people. Russia is not historically responsible for oppressing black people. So you getting up and going, I stand as a black man. The Russians are like, we know. What? Why Actually, would we care? Russia is the most ethnically diverse European <laughs> country. And, like, unironically is. And you could say, well, look, if you were a Chechen or something or whatever, you know, you could be like, well, there's a case against Russian imperialism, blah, blah, blah. But the Africans don't have that string to pull, right? They've got that with every other. So David has just gone, the Russians are white, aren't they? I'm a black man. No, no, moron. It doesn't work on the Russians, you moron. It works on the Americans. It works on us. It works on the French. It doesn't work on the Russians. You're an idiot. But that that is interesting because it shows the 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 weirdness of CR, of critical race theory. Oh, it's just it's, it's it's just an Americanism. Everything is everything that happens yeah. in the world is interpreted through lenses of critical race theory. Absolutely, and it is an embarrassment. It's just like because things. He's not wrong that I mean Russia's mafia state and he wants to become mafia empire. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. But I mean, you know, in this he's going on about oh I, I can't believe you're invading places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd never do that, mm. you know. What about Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan? What about Palestine? You know, uh, 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 God, you know. So you make us look ridiculous through your hypocrisy. You are a moron, absolute moron, right? And what's worse is that Keir Starmer decided to go over to Biden and was like, "Look, can we just start striking Russia?" And Biden was like, "No, that would be moronic, wouldn't it?" Like, because but Putin's literally come out and say, "Well, I mean, we've got loads of nuclear weapons, so you know." So we we are actually we have a warmongering retarded cabinet who keep doing really stupid things and even the guardian are like god Keir, would you stop <laughs> imagine being at the security council and saying i know what it is i'm standing against putin i know what it is to not be allowed to enter to enter the toilet <laughs> of my gender or something. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's, that's where Lammy's at, where he's like, I'm a black man. And, and they're like, and Keir Starmer as well got up in front of the UN Council and was like, I can't believe Russia would show their face here. It's like, Keir, they're not liberals. Like, they don't have your morality. They don't agree with you. You're like, you know, angrily like giving them the side eye across the thing, like Lammy did. And it's just like, you're an embarrassment. You you have no dignity. You're moronic. And, and they're all looking around at you. They're all looking at each other going, oh, God, is this what the UK is run by? It's like, yes, 
we're we're literally we're a more unoccupied co country and unfortunately we send david lammy as our representative we send keir starmer to america to get rebuffed by biden of all people about like launching missiles at russia it's like god we're so stupid and next secretary of foreign affairs will be will be able to say sorry i know the the tragedy of looking at skid marks on a pride mural <laughs> so we we are just occupied by morons and it infuriates me i hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the lotus eaters and if you want to see what else we're up to you can watch us have a lot of fun in our series lads hour on the website this time we're talking about GeoGuessr, and if you want to follow all the other work we're putting out you can follow us on twitter thank you very much for watching and goodbye <laughs>